Okay, in this video I want to introduce you to some of the basic concepts of vectors. So what I'm going to assume, even though uh, vectors is um, a topic at GCSE level, I'm going to assume that you have forgotten everything and we're going to be starting uh, vectors from scratch, okay? So in this video I really want to introduce to you what is a vector, um, how are they used, um, and what, what can we do with them. So a vector is a line that has two things, okay? It has a magnitude and a direction. Now, any old line has magnitude, okay? Any old line that I draw has magnitude because it has a certain length. So the magnitude you can kind of think of is the amount. So the magnitude is the length of the line. So any line that I draw on this whiteboard, okay, will have a certain length attributed to it, and hence will have a magnitude. Now, with the direction, if I just draw any old line on it, then effectively um, it's not going in any particular direction, because even though I draw a line on like that, it could be going that way or it could be going that way, it doesn't really matter. But a vector def uh, has a direction attributed to it, okay? And that is why we put these arrows on the lines, okay? So it's telling me that this vector that's going from A to B is going in that direction, okay? It's not going in that direction, it's going in that direction, okay? So the vector has these two bits of important information attributed to it. Now, with a diagram like this, how exactly does it work? Well, to represent this vector going from A to B, what I can do is I can write it down as A, B, with an arrow at the top, um, pointing in the direction from this letter to this letter, from that point to that point. Okay, So that represents this line here. Okay, and subsequently you could have BC with the arrow going in that direction, and then you've got CD going in that direction, and then you've got DA going in that direction. Okay, because the arrow is going from D to A. Now you could write that as AD with the arrow going the other way. Okay, but in general it's easier to work with if you always have the arrow pointing from left to right. Okay. So, if I was, for example, um, going to add these up, so you can add vectors together, okay, what this is telling you is to go from A to B, and then from B to C, okay? So this tells you how to get from A to C. So, to get from A to C, I've got to go along AB, and then I've got to go along BC, okay? So that's something that I could work with here. Now, I could also think about going, well, if I go from A to B, and then I go from B to C, okay, and then I go from C to D, and then I go back from D to A, what's happened is that I've actually gone all the way around in a circle, and that would just be, well, zero, okay? And it would effectively be the zero vector. And you can see that I'm underlining it here. That's not because I'm underlining it as this is the answer. Vectors um, have different forms of notation, okay? And although I'm using this notation here, it's likely that you've also seen the notation um, with a uh, being made bold, okay, so it's not very easy to make a letter bold, okay, but it might look like that. Now, in general, when, when you read a text, so if you read an exam paper and it's got A put in bold, then that represents a vector. But because we can't easily write in bold, we don't actually 
do this, we mean a and underline it. Okay, this is synonymous um, uh, notation. Okay, and I could represent it with this if I was typing it out. Okay, as a made bold, or if I was writing it just on the whiteboard, I'd have a underline, or I could represent the vector with A to B with an arrow at the top, okay? Usually I find it easier to work with these, uh, with the arrows, okay? Because it's clear exactly where you're going from, where you're going to, and how to combine them. Now, what else can we get from this diagram? Well, what we have is that because of these specific directions, here we've got DA, for example, Okay, what if I want AD, okay, what is that, if I want to write it as A to D? Well, because you're going back on yourself, if you're going from A to D, it is effectively the negative of D to A. So this is the negative of AD, okay? So you could, if you want to reverse the direction of a vector, then you just need to make it the negative, okay? So this is uh, the conceptual part of how vectors can be added together, or how you get from one point to another, or how you use this, okay? The only other bit that I would probably uh, suggest is that if, for example, um, I changed this bit around. So let's say I put the arrow there and we've now got DC, then maybe AB and DC are parallel. So AB and DC are parallel. If that is the case and if you're told that, then that means that the vector that gets you from A to B is some multiple of the vector that gets you from D to C. Okay, so if they are parallel, then AB is some multiple of DC. Okay, and that then allows you to solve problems in those kind of cases. So what we want to do next is we want to see how this is going to be put into practice because uh, when we deal with vectors at A-level, we deal with them, uh, in the majority of cases, in three dimensions, okay? So how exactly does this notation all fit together, and how do we start building up this picture of where we are going with this, sub with this topic, okay? So we're going to see more of this in the next video.